To commence is to begin. A commencement is a beginning. Annie Grace and I, this uh, couple of weeks ago, had the privilege of participating in three commencement celebrations in one week for three grandchildren. One graduated from high school, one received a master's degree in social work, and the third received a degree from law school and is now preparing for the law exams. Three commencements. And all the speakers said the same thing, virtually. It was the same theme. You're about to begin anew. You've done all the preparation work, and now all you go into the world to begin anew, to start over, a second chance, a new life for you. Imagine commencing, starting over with a degree this time. We were at another commencement for another. We've got a lot of grandchildren who've gone to college and other places and picked up degrees all over the place. Anyway, one of them graduated from Duke, and at the end of the commencement, the president took over the microphone following the commencement speaker and said to this assembled throng of several thousand Duke graduates that day, you are now educated people. Well, that's something. Educated people. Four years at Duke, and you're considered an educated person. That's wonderful, really. Start over. You've got a new beginning. Today starts your new day. Commence. Well, we were at another commencement out on the West Coast with two grandchildren. And as the uh, ceremonies wound down, the president took the microphone and said to the assembled graduates, go out and change the world. Well, that's, that's quite an opportunity. Easy to do, right? So they went out. And <laughs> yeah, I assume that the whole graduating class is busy changing the world. That's wonderful. They're commencing a new way of life, a new way of thinking about themselves, and a new way of thinking about the world itself. Well, you know, David, in, in the book of Samuel, we have three stories of David commencing. He has three commencement experiences in his life. The first one happened when he was 15 years old. He was just a shepherd boy, and Samuel brought him in from the fields and, and uh, said, you will be king, but don't tell anybody. Keep it a secret. Don't let Saul, the present king, don't let him know that I'm anointing you because he'll kill you. So David kept it a secret. For almost 10 years, he kept it a secret until Saul was dead, and so was his oldest son. And so here came the second one. David was named the king of Judah. Now, if you remember your Old Testament, you know that in that time, a thousand years before Jesus, the kingdom was divided. There was Judah in the south, and there was Israel in the north. Two kingdoms. Saul was king of Israel. David, this young man of approximately 20 years of age, was king of Judah. After Saul's death, the elders came from Israel down to Hebron in Judah and asked David to become their king and united the two kingdoms into one nation. And that led to the third commencement because Samuel anointed David for a third time. Three commencements. 
Three times somebody said to David, now you can begin anew, and anew, and anew. Commence, commence, commence. Maybe that's one of the greatest lessons David has to teach us, that it's a good thing in life to begin anew, and anew, and anew. To never stop commencing. Always to go forth as if you're starting over. Actually, actually, that's what we're here to do today. Whenever you see the elements of communion in front of you, you know that it's the opportunity to commence. The invitation that we read as we enter into this service goes like this. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sin and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life. Intend to lead a new life. Commence. Another commencement. In this church, we, com we commence on the first Sunday of every month when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We begin anew. Our sins are forgiven and we are strengthened to lead a Christian life. That's what John Wesley said was the value of Holy Communion. Our sins are forgiven, and we are strengthened to lead a Christian life. And so today, I invite you to commence as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Amen.